Hello everybody, welcome to the Speedy Freak channel and welcome to my new 25 tips for beginners video. This video is mainly aimed at beginners, but to be honest, no matter how long you've played, you're probably going to find some tips here which are going to be a great help. In my videos, I'm quite renowned for explaining things in quite a bit of detail, so this is not going to be a, a really, really short video. I like to actually explain things and how they all work, okay? So... There's a lot more to be learned in this video, okay? So thanks a lot, everyone. Hope you enjoy it. Please leave comments, um, criticism, anything you can do. Just please leave something behind, okay? Thank you very much. Enjoy. Check this out. Tip number one, when you're playing the center map, start off in the jungles. It's the easiest play to start off. You're not segregated from everyone. There's plenty of room and there's pretty much every resource you need to start off as a, a beginner. Tip two is change your graphic settings. Now, no matter what card you've got, in my personal opinion, you should have a little look in your graphic settings because in some situation, you're probably going to have times where the frame rate's going to plummet. Now, I'm personally using a NVIDIA GTX 970, which is quite a good card, so I don't have to worry a great deal. But if we have a little look at the graphic settings, the main thing is to consider view distance. Now, view distance definitely because you know, there's more for it to render. Um, if you have this on low, there are not many things that shows on your screen. Therefore, the graphics card doesn't have to work as hard. However, I still heavily recommend having this either on high or epic because, to be honest with you, I've played for the game a very long time with the graphics settings on low because I was told to, to save my frame rate. But you miss out on so many resources, it's unbelievable. You'll be flying around quite happily looking for metal forever and then you realize that it was under your nose this whole time. So high or epic, epic if you can. Things to reduce, anti-aliasing, you may want to reduce this down to medium or high, because that's definitely an, a big one. Um, on low, you could give it a try. I don't think it would look so clean cut, though. Uh, general shadows, no matter what, I'd say just keep it on low. Personally, not only do I think it looks the best, but it saves you a hell of a lot of frames per second. Um... Anything higher than that, I think, looks pretty messy, to be honest. And I'm, I just get sick of shadows. You go in caves and everything, it's just way too dark. You can't see a thing. Um, sky quality, I don't think, makes a great deal. So I try to have that on the highest. It does make a bit of a difference, though. So if you are struggling and you don't care about the sky quality, just lower it right down. And ground color is a big one. So keep that right down. Okay. Tip three is to play on unofficial servers. Now, I know that may sound a little contradicting because I've just started a new character on an official server, but the only reason I did that is because I, that way I can relate to as many beginners as possible. Really, before long, I would heavily recommend going on to uh, an unofficial server, and the reason for that is they have increased uh, taming, they have increased experience, they have increased harvesting, now, usually I'm all for just sticking with the general game, but it does get a bit ridiculous later on where when you're trying to tame an animal, let's just say you want to tame a, a moderately high level T-Rex, you will be waiting there hours. I mean hours. You will be sitting there for hours feeding it meat and keeping it knocked out. So I definitely recommend playing a server that at least allows you to tame faster, such as this one, for example. Being able to gather faster and get experience faster are just extra perks on top. But for me personally, the taming is very important, so I'm not sitting there all day. Um, also, all of these different servers have different maps that they use. The center is the most up-to-date map. The island is the first map. And uh, Valhalla is the second map. Um, and they all have loads of different mods. There we go. That one says modded in the title. Dragons. They all have different mods. That one makes them all difficult and pretty. So yeah, personally, for beginners, I think something like this, a little bit extra tame, a little bit extra gather, a little bit extra experience, but I wouldn't go for dragons and all of this crazy stuff just yet, okay? We're just learning. 
tip four is to know your tools. Two main tools that you're going to be using all the way through your game is a pick and a hatchet, although later on they improved metal. Um, against wood, a pick will give you more thatch than it will wood. And a hatchet will give you more wood than it will thatch. Against stone, a pick will give you more flint than it will stone. And a hatchet will give you more stone than it will flint. Against animals, a pick will give you more meat than it will hide. And a hatchet will give you more hide than it will meat. Tip 5 is to always carry a few spears. So, near the very beginning of the game, one of the spears is one of the very first things that you can get. Always carry spears with you because a spear is far superior than a hatchet or a pickaxe in a fight. It has more range, it has more damage, and if, let's just say, a dialo is chasing you, that's all you really need to do in order to kill it. But when it's a hatchet, you pretty much just have to get in there. You have to be right next to it if you're going to hit it. Spear is a lifesaver. Always carry a few because they break easy and you might want to throw them as well. Tip 6 is to always craft cloth armor as soon as you possibly can. The reason I say that is, although cloth armor looks pretty rubbish, it's still defense. It's not a lot, but it's still a decent amount of defense. So if people attack you, if you ever uh, get in a fight, or if a dinosaur attacks you, it might allow you to take those extra few essential hits that could be the difference between life and death. Tip 7 is to only use thatch foundations as sort of a, a blueprint. So when we look here, this is not mine, this is somebody else's, but they've started building a base out of thatch. Now if you're going to do this, that's fine, but only do it as a blueprint. Don't make this your permanent base. If you have a base design in mind, but you're not too sure whether it'll plan out, make it in thatch first because it's easy to make. If you like it, make some wooden foundations and then put them over them. And that'll destroy the thatch and then it'll put the wood in the place of it. If you just start out by putting wood down, it might have took you a while to get those resources and then it might not end up being what you want. So yes, always use thatch foundations as a blueprint first before putting down your wooden foundations. But never, ever just stick with thatch. It's too easy to break. I could happily just break this now in like a minute or so. As you can see, look at the health just going down. If you've got any prized possessions in there, they're going to be lost. Tip 8 is to always keep an organized hotbar. And the reason I say that is, if you always put the same items in the same numbers... It'll become second nature to you, and if you ever change server, you ever create a new survivor, or anything like that, you'll always just put the items straight away where you want them, craft them, and away you go. So it's much, much quicker than faffing around and putting them all in the wrong places, or accidentally pressing the wrong number and getting the wrong tool out at a critical time. So always organize your hotbar. Tip 9 is to kill dodos. And Dylos, which are these guys here, the, the guys that spit on you, for hide. So Dodos, as you know, are really, really easy to kill. There's one kill just there. And then provide you with some hide. Dylos are a little bit harder to kill, but still relatively easy for beginners. Um, those big turtle guys there, I think they're called Carbons, something like that. They provide you with loads of hide, but you're going to need a ranged weapon if you're going to take them down. Because they've got good reach for their neck. Triceratops, they're just really, really offensive. They're quite easy to kill, but again, it's much easier with a bow and an arrow. Parasaurs, which are those guys, run really, really fast. So they're hard to keep up with unless you've got a ranged weapon. And same with the Fiomas. I think that's how it's pronounced, I'm not sure. Those are the fat piggies. They are actually the fastest. They are surprisingly fast. And that's why I say the spear is best. Tip 10 is join a tribe, preferably if you have a friend to join it with. Now, a tribe has unlimited advantages, so it's definitely recommended. Um, 
a tribe, of course, if you're with somebody, then they're going to help you build, they're going to help you harvest items, they're going to help you uh, fight enemies and pick up your stuff if you die. But not only that, you also share experience. So if you're near each other, and you're both doing things like crafting or killing things, you share experience so you level up faster. So that is a win-win. Tip 11, transferring and dropping items. So, for, what I mean by that is, if I just go into this storage box here, if I want to transfer this wood across to this chest, rather than dragging and dropping everything really, really slowly, which I used to do for quite a lot, you can just press the letter T, T for Tango. Just press T or hold it down, and that will transfer everything to the box. Now, a couple more points on top of that. If instead I want to drop something, and I aim at it, instead of clicking on it, and then clicking drop item, you could just aim at it and press O for Oscar. There you go. And if I want to transfer something in halves, or one by one, if I hold down the control key, that will transfer items one at a time. And if I hold down the shift key, that will transfer half of those items at a time. Good little tip to know. Tip 12. Hold the H key for more details on you specifically or the environment around you. So if I hold the H key, you can see more specifically at the bottom right there how much food there is, how much experience I need. And at the top left hand corner I can see the temperature, uh, what region it is, what day it is, what time it is, everything like that. Tip 13 is to use the Ark Survival Wiki. Now, the Ark Survival Wiki is absolutely essential, to be quite honest with you. And the main reason I say that is because of this right here. All animals have different abilities. So the Ankylosaurus, for example. If I go into the Ankylosaurus and I select Taming, it gives me all information about what the best food is in order to tame it and a taming strategy, and also this section, utility. Gather, an ankylo, uh, excellent for gathering materials. Oh well, it doesn't give me enough there. But basically what I'm trying to get at is, every single animal has its own ability. Ankylos are great for gathering flint, and they're great for gathering metal. Uh, a mammoth is great for gathering wood, which it'll tell you, or should tell you, uh, nope, it doesn't tell you, but a mammoth is great for gathering wood, and also for resources, keratin. It can tell you what are the best creatures to gather keratin with. For example, if I had a saber tooth and I ate an ankylosaurus, that's how I would get the most keratin. So the wiki is perfect. If you've ever got any questions about anything, any rates, any figures, how something works, how you can find a particular resource or animal, or how to tame one, the wiki is your best bet. Tip 14. Holding down the appropriate hotkey will give you more information about that particular item. For example, I've got my hatchet in number 2. If I hold down the number 2 key, it'll give me more information about the hatchet. Um, the same as what I would get from my inventory, and also the requirements in order to repair it as well. Same with the meat. Uh, if I hold down 0, it tells me when the meat will spoil. It's exactly the same as what you would be given in your inventory, but it's nicer than having to go in your inventory just to simply hold the button down. Tip 15 is to always use your hatchet when gathering from animals. Now I know that I mentioned earlier the hatchet and the pick both have different uses when you're gathering from animals, but truth be told, no matter what, you're always going to be getting more than enough meat. So the hatchet as I mentioned, is used for getting more important things, such as hide, pelt, carrot, and chitin, all of these important ingredients. So always use the hatchet just to gather all of those ingredients. As you can see, you get more than enough meat anyways. So don't worry about using the pick, because then you're going to be cheaping yourself out on important ingredients, and you're going to have more meat than you're ever going to need. Tip 16. Try to get in the habit of keep pressing E as you're running around. So, well, it's pretty convenient really, because if you have a going from A to B, you'll just be picking up that little bit extra stone, that those few extra berries, that little bit extra fibre. 
So there's no harm really in getting in the habit of doing that. Tip 17, if you're struggling to get some meat, then kill some fish. Now these are the fish that I mean. Uh, what's their name? Uh, coal? I think it's pronounced. So, the thing is with coal, they're really, really easy to kill. They've got barely any health. They can't really swim very far. And guess what? They don't fight back. Go. Mr. Fish is dead. And look at that. You get plenty of meat. Plenty of it. Nine meat, just for that. So, I mean, if you're an experienced player, which you'll probably not be watching this because this tutorial is mainly for beginners, then you'll never really need to kill fish. I don't remember the last time I've killed a fish until making this video. But as a beginner, by all means, just come in here, kill a couple of fish, and then you've got yourself loaded with meat. Now, you'll only find these fish in rivers like this, which is why I've had to travel quite a distance in order to make this next tip for you. I was all the way down there. If you just jump into the big wide ocean, you're not going to find very many of these fish at all, only in rivers. Tip 18, understand how to tame. I know that's quite a broad tip, but I think it's an important one, especially for the beginners. As you can see, I'm actually on a different server here. This one, I've got a lot more tools. I was thinking it might be a bit easier to show you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to knock it out first. As a beginner, you can only do this with a wooden club or a slingshot. But then as you progress, you'll then have a bow and some trank arrows. Uh, me personally, I'm doing this with a crossbow. So let me knock this out first and then I'll explain more, okay? So it's only a low level, so once they start to be knocked out, then they start to run away. So, every single animal tames differently. So, the lower the level, so this one's only a level 25, the quicker they are to knock out, and the longer it takes for them to tame, when you actually start to tame them. And all of them have a different topo level. As you can see, it starts to reduce down. Once that gets to zero, then they wake up again. Okay, so you've got that time limit in order to get them tamed. So if I go back on the wiki, Arc Survival, Trike, the wiki will explain the best taming method, what's the best method in order to knock them out, and also what they prefer to eat in order to tame them. So by the looks of things here, I don't have any vegetables, I don't have any kibble, but I do have medjo berries. Not many, but I've got some. So if I feed it some medjo berries, it will start to eat those. Then as you can see, the taming's now going up. Let me just get a few more of those if I can. So, now if I was just to feed them regular berries, so any of these other berries, it would still tame, but it would tame a lot slower. It takes a lot more of those berries in order to have it tamed. Now if it's waking up faster than it's taming, which it looks as though this one might be, then you can either put narcotics in its inventory and then remote use the item, remote use the narcotics, or if you don't have any narcotics, just feed it some narco berries. And if you look at the topo, it'll start going up again. There we go. Topo's going up again. And that'll keep it knocked out on the ground, so then I've got more time to tame it. Now, with carnivores, they're going to prefer meat, of course. Now, you can just feed them regular raw meat, you can feed them fish meat, uh, or you can feed them prime meat. As I say, every single animal is different, so they're all going to require different meat. Uh, if I look at T-Rex, taming, there we go. If you don't have any kibble, which you're not going to near the beginning, then you'll have raw prime meat, raw prime fish meat, all of these different options. So I know you're not going to be taming any T-Rex, and you're not going to be taming a freaking, you know, massive megalodon or anything like that. But I was just using this video as an example. Get the fuck out of my face. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, knock them out first. Start to feed them uh, their favorite food. If they start to wake up, then, of course, feed it some narcotics. Okay. 
tip 19 is learn the whistle commands. Uh, also, apologies if the last tip was a little bit loud. Um, it's the next day now, so I only just realized the sound might have been a bit louder than it was supposed to be. So, with the whistle commands, um, I've had to join my OLS server here to tell you this. This is where I've just got a few more pets. So, um, in order to target a single animal, uh, I press T to make the animal follow, Y to make the animal stop, J to make all animals follow, and U to make all animals stop. So if I press J, then U. Whew, I had to do that fast. And also, another button that comes in handy is the period key, otherwise known as full stop. And that tells the animals to attack. Now, there are more. Um, semicolon, I think, turns all the animals passive, but there are a bit too many for me to remember. So if you actually go into your options, you've got them all here. There we go. Whistle all neutral, whistle all passive, attack this target, everything like that. So if you want to learn them all, just look in your options. Tip 20 is use a herbivore to gather. Now, I don't see any other tips videos ever mentioning this, so I thought it was really important that I did, because I didn't even know you could do this till quite later on in the game. Every single animal has its own abilities. Every single one. You know, they can all do different things. Um, some can fly, some can poison, um, some can gather certain resources better. But what all herbivores can do is all herbivores, as well, pretty much every herbivore, can help you gather berries. So usually, if I go around trying to collect all of narco berries, which you usually need quite a lot of, as you can see, it's taking quite a while. You know, I haven't got any just yet. You know, it takes a while. But, if I do this, there we go, 31 narco berries. There's another 30. There we go, there we go. And then you just press F to go into your animal's inventory. And there's all the berries there. Look at all that. How quick is that? So again, it'll be a little bit slower on an official server. I've had to change over to this other server just to make the examples a little bit easier. But yes, use a herbivore to gather food. You need to have a saddle on its back. Tip 21 is check animal inventories. Now, a lot of the time when you kill an animal, such as a T-Rex or a mammoth or something like that, They'll have something on their inventory, which you can then grab out before you then harvest their meat or hide or whatever it is. Now, this doesn't happen with all animals. Um, for example, I've just killed this monkey here and it doesn't have anything on its inventory. Usually if you aim at an animal, it'll say E to check inventory. Um, now, if you don't do that, it won't actually drop any sort of package or anything on the floor. It'll just straight up be lost. Tip 22 is place more than one bed. Whether you're by yourself or whether you've got a tribe, I always recommend at least two beds. Now the reason I say this even by yourself is, let's just say you've got your base here and it's under attack, either by a player or by a T-Rex, something like that. If you die, then of course you can spawn in your bed and away you go. But that has something like a two minute or a five minute cooldown. So then if you die again, getting your gear, then it gives you that second chance. If there's two people in a tribe, and then the both of you die, then the both of you can spawn. Okay? So I recommend always at least two. If you're by yourself, then two's fine. If you've got someone else with you, then just to be on the safe side, you might want three or four. Personal opinion. Tip 23 is a simple one. Remember to cook meat. Now, oh, hello. Okay, goodbye. Um, you can easily pick up berries all around the frickin' globe. Now, if you're on an official server again, the gather rate is so damn slow and low that it takes fucking forever just to get a few berries. Unless you have a tame. Okay? But, even though... Will you fuck off? Okay. Even still... Berries are just a pain in the ass. If your hunger is all the way down at rock bottom, they're just a pain in the ass because you've just got to keep spamming the key 40 fucking times. But usually, just having about three or four bits of cooked meat will then get your hunger level right back to the top again. It's a simple one, but it gets your hunger right up. Berries 
The only good thing about berries is they also refill your water supply. So there it is on 83. Now it's on 85 and it's going up. Okay, so berries are good for water if you've got no water nearby. Tip 24, how to level fast. Now I know I'm in a, a higher level base right now because I'm on this solar server again. But I thought it would be a little bit easier to show you all how to level fast on here. So... I'm going to tell you two tips on how to level fast as a beginner, and then I'm going to give you the third tip, which in my opinion is the most important and one not to forget, okay? First tip, and the one that you can do soonest as a beginner, is craft loads of these fellas, cloth hats. Cloth hats, really, really cheap to make, 10 fiber, and for like as when you're a beginner, they give you quite a decent amount of experience. When you're my level, even on this server, it's going to do absolutely nothing because I'm level 73. But when you're a beginner, make loads of cloth hats. If you want those extra few levels, they'll definitely chuck you up quite a few. Okay? Next tip on leveling is narcotics. Okay, so you're going to need to learn the motor and pestle and the narcotic. Uh, I'm not sure what level that you learn these on, but they're near the very top, so it's not very far. Maybe level 10, something like that. Once you've learned them, you need to put down a mortar and pestle, have some spoiled meat, have some narco berries. It requires one spoiled meat and five narco berries for one narcotic, and make loads of them, okay? Heavily recommend just spreading them across um, two to four mortar and pestles. Get loads of narco berries from a herbivore, such as a trike. If you want to get a ridiculous amount of narco berries. I heavily recommend the Stegosaurus. It has a ridiculous sized tail and in one swing it just takes out hundreds of plants and you just get a shit ton, okay? Trikes are definitely helpful, but Stegosaurus, they'll get you a whole lot, okay? So, uh, do I have more spoiled meat? I think I do. Always got more spoiled meat. So, just spread them across like that. Douche. Douche. Okay. So for my level, this will probably not do a great deal. Uh, or at least I won't notice it straight away. After all of these are done, I've got about 38 or something being made. Then it will chuck me up quite a bit, even for a level 73. But as a beginner, definitely make loads of those, okay? Get a, a good herbivore tamed, get loads of narco berries, and chuck it right up. Now the most important tip is just play the game. Just play the damn game. Now I know that seems obvious and it may seem a little bit silly, but I don't waste my time anymore making loads and loads of cloth hats or, you know, um, making loads of narcotics. Now I know that I'm on a... The last tip the most important leveling tip, however, is to just enjoy the game. Now, I know that sounds obvious and a little bit silly, but you may spend way too much time just focusing on getting loads of fiber for cloth hats or getting loads of resources for narcotics. If, you know, once you've played around a little bit and you've got yourself a few levels, only really get enough narco berries to make as many narcotics as you want. Don't don't tire yourself out just getting loads and loads of berries and loads and loads of spoiled meat if you're not enjoying yourself, okay? When I built this whole base uh, with Billy's help, getting all of the resources, smelting it all down, making all of the metal walls and everything on the smithy and the guns, that gets me a ridiculous amount of levels. I'm probably 25 to 30 levels higher than Billy, and that's because although he helps a great deal, um, getting all the resources, I'm the one that actually crafts them and builds them and places them all down, okay? So that's it. Just enjoy the game. Just play naturally. Build your base. Put your campfire down. Hunt animals. Craft yourself some armor. Doing all of those things will get you plenty of experience, okay? And uh, from these narcotics, just to let you know, I've just done about 38 or something. Despite being level 73, that's chucked me up quite a bit. And if I was to get the rest of my spoiled meats, because I've got it all over the place. There we go. 
then that'll probably finish my level off. So even at this level, you know, that's doing a great deal. There we go, 78 there. And 61 there, so you can only imagine just how well that's going to do for me. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, sorry for the in-depth discussion on that one, but I really feel as though that tip needs to be explained in detail. Tip 25 is to go for the beacons. Um, now, I don't do this a lot, personally, um, and that's because I'm just... I've always got something on my mind. I'm always crafting something. I'm always building something. But lucky for me, I've got Billy in the group, and Billy loves going for the beacons because he likes to keep himself busy. Okay, so always go for the beacons if you see them nearby. All of the different beacons have different level requirements. Now, if I just go into my favorite wiki here, you can see that white, uh, level 3, green, level 15, blue, 25, purple, 35, yellow, 45, and red, 60. Okay, so obviously the higher the level, the better loot you get. Now, for actually, if I just look on the wiki here, it'll tell you what possible loot you can get. So if I start off with green, because white's just straight up shit, you can get some decent stuff here. You know, you can get some building equipment, some hide equipment, some arrows and shit. Um, once you start getting onto the blue, that's the good stuff. You've got some, uh, a lot of building stuff, uh, metal weapons and armor, and it just starts to get better and better, really. Some actual better firearms. And these, as long as you play on a community server, these don't take very long to get to at all. Me and Billy have always had all of this stuff. We picked up a fabricated pistol on the Gula server. And then we'll get the Yod Red drop every now and then, which is good. Uh, we've had some C4 chargers. We've had rocket propelled grenades, refrigerators, auto turrets. We've had all of that. So yes, keep an eye out on the drops because sometimes they'll just chuck you way ahead of where you already are. Bonus tip! Always aim for the head. Now here's a perfect example for you. If I shoot this raptor in the... Oh. Shit. Shit. So in the head it's doing like 54. Oh shit. There we go. So that was the headshot right there. 147. But on the body it was doing like 54, 55. So the headshots not only do a lot more damage... But also, if you're using tranquilizer arrows or you're using a slingshot, it also uh, knocks them out a lot faster as well. The uh, the torpor gained, which is what causes them to fall unconscious, depends on the amount of damage done. I don't know the exact calculation, but basically the more damage you do with a slingshot or a tranquilizer arrow also knocks them out a lot faster as well. So there we have it, everyone. I hope you all found it. Very helpful. Of course, even if you're not a beginner, there's bound to be some tips in there that'll give you a hand. So, thanks a lot for your time. If you like the video, then please, of course, click like. Um, show any friends if they play Ark Survival as well. I've also done a, a 25 tips video and a guide for Ark Survival of the Fittest. So, if you're liking that game, check those videos out as well. And as always, I always like to explain in depth. So, that should help you out a great deal. So, thanks a lot, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Keep at it.